Hey everybody, this is Time Rider, and what you're looking at here is a Matchbox number 67D Datsun 260Z. You know what a lot of people don't know about the Z cars is that they were introduced into the American market not to compete with the American cars. They wanted to compete with the European sports car heavyweights head on. And they produced a model that not only bested them dynamically, but also proved to be far more reliable than anything hailing from Germany, Italy, or England. I'm going to mess around with this one today and uh, try something a little different that Matchbox never did. So stick around. This was actually a really good casting. Uh, with opening doors and the super fast wheels were still in pretty good shape. Uh, as you can see there, it was actually held together with three posts, which is kind of unusual considering the size of this thing. Um, it had a lot of flea bites on it, and the finish on the paint was largely gone. So I didn't feel too bad taking it apart. And lately I've been drilling these pilot holes. I really like doing it this way. I think it helps keep the, the bigger drill here a lot better centered uh, when I'm drilling out the post. You can see the bumpers are kind of chipped up and stuff too, but the amazing thing is those super fast wheels are in such good condition. I go forward and, uh, you know, finish it off. And uh, then, uh, as per typical, it came apart pretty easily. Uh, it was just a chassis and an interior and the window glass and then uh, some removable doors. And, of course, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, because I want it to go back together very easily. You know, the only thing that really concerned me about taking this apart was how small these were. So I, I was really being very careful. I didn't want to blow the posts out. I suppose I probably could have, you know, just epoxied it back together. The front post... It was, wasn't was quite as bad, and they did have these reinforcing, uh, I don't know what you call them, you know, supports on either side. They'd had that front and back, although the front was a little better. And then, of course, uh, here I am. I got my Anderson Oiler from TG Wraps in wonderful Rogers, Minnesota, and we're going to tap some holes. And, uh, yeah, this was really weird. I'm kind of... I'm guessing they probably did that because they wanted to have that big back window. Although I have seen them sometimes put a post in the weirdest place. Or they they could have held it together with a snap, but they chose not to do that. Uh, I did get the holes drilled uh, in all three of the holes. Very, very well done. And then uh, while I'm tapping it, of course, again, I want to be really careful because I, I don't want to blow the posts out. And uh, I was able to do that. And uh, as I've always said, you got to put it back together sometime. In case you're wondering, that's a magnet. I bought these uh, uh, those screwdrivers and they aren't magnetized. It's very frustrating. But anyway, I did the other three holes. And then got out the uh, primordial ooze. Take a last look. Because there she goes. And we're going to give it a little shake for luck. So even though this was aircraft stripper, it was uh, getting kind of tired, I think. Uh, everything didn't come off. But as per normal, I'm going to use a wire brush first to start to clean this up. Now, just so you know what I'm thinking, uh, I was thinking of uh, painting this with Spectra Flame. Because uh, I just thought it would look really good with the super fast wheels. Um, you know, funny thing, the, the Z cars, this particular one, I don't know if Matchbox does this on purpose or what, but uh, the 260Z was very short-lived. 
Uh, you know, it came out as a 240Z, and they called it a 240 because it had a 2.4 liter engine, and of course the 260 had a, a 2.6 liter engine, and it was followed. They made these in 1975, only made about 50,000 of them, and it was followed up by the uh, 280Z, which was immensely popular. Casting lines are going to go because if I'm going to do Spectre Flame, uh, that what this is going to involve is going to be a lot of sanding and filing and polishing. Because if you're going to do Spectre Flame right, I mean, by God, at least try to do it right. The 260 also had the 2 plus 2 version, which was on a longer wheelbase, and it was a four-seater. It really wasn't very popular, though. The black polishing, that's a coarser compound. And, uh, you know, the, I'm starting to get this to the point where uh, I can use, you know, finer grits of, uh, you know, a, a media, medium, whatever. Um, and this is just really my first pass at this and if you've ever done this you know that uh, you know it's a lot of work and really all I'm trying to do here now that I've got the casting lines filed off and I've brushed it and whatnot uh, I'm gonna polish it so I can see what I need to do to this uh, before I put paint on it and I use Meguiar's uh, metal polish it's a really good polish I'm sure you've heard uh, other people who do this extol the virtues of it, but boy, it sure polishes to a mirror shine. Of course, Datsun actually was a component of Nissan Motors, and uh, they ceased operation for a time, and then were like uh, relaunched in like 2013. This is a really nice casting. I really enjoy doing it. I'm cleaning it here with mineral spirits, and I love mineral spirits. I use it for so many things, and you've probably heard me say this before. You know, I buy it by the gallon. I have problems there. I have problems on the roof. You can see the fine scratching still. Uh, back where I, uh, where I filed off the casting line, there's still one little uh, pimple there that I need to try to get off. Um... Yeah, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on this casting, in my opinion, if I want it to look its best with Spectra Flame. So anyway, yeah, I guess it's, uh, let's get to work. So a uh, certain amount of wet sanding uh, with, uh, you know, I'm usually using somewhere between 800 and 1000 grit that first time around. And then I generally move to sanding pads after I'm done with the papers. Uh, this pad, I believe, is a 4,000 grit pad. I thought I saw four dots on the end. That's how I marked them. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I get it to a point where, uh, you know, I'm starting to get rid of all that uh, pebbly uh, finish and get it nice and smooth. I usually like to stop and take a good long look at it at some point. And uh, then I go back to it. And here I'm using 4 aught steel wool on the doors and the body. Can't forget those doors. And then we're back to doing some polishing again to try to see where we can get it as far as how, how shiny. Clean the polish off. You know, boom, there you go. It's starting to look really good. I think I still had a little bit of pebbling right behind the doors and maybe on the front quarter panel there. I was really worried that I was going to wipe out that 260Z that's, uh, you know, a part of the casting. I don't want to sand it off. Those doors are starting to look pretty good. The back edge of the doors... Uh, had a lot of pebbling, so I had to work on those, again, without sanding off the door handles. 
kind of zoom in a little bit, you can see that I'm really starting to get a good polish on those doors. But I still have right up in front of the windshield here, there's a lot of damage. And then also there, a little bit on the back quarter panels. I still have more work to do. And I, more sanding that, you know, I'm not going to show you every inch of it because it would take hours, but then I get back to the polishing wheels once I've sanded it a little bit. And I think I have those imperfections out. Uh, then I'll, I'll polish it again. You know, this process, it is, it's a long process. And I suppose somebody might say, well, is it worth it? Um, the blue incidentally is a little bit finer grit. Uh, I don't know. It's a hobby, you know? And, uh, so I guess time is something that I have an abundance, especially in the winter here in Minnesota. So I don't mind taking some time doing some projects like this that are kind of fun. And I'm going to give it one last good polish here with the Meguiar's. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to get ready to put some paint on it. I bought these bits. Um, they're like polishing bits. And so I'm using them to get into the crevices and the, I used them in the headlight openings. Uh, and I've decided to make this paint using uh, Spectraflame Magenta and Spectraflame Red. I thought the magenta was just not, it was a little like too purple. You can kind of see on my dropper there how purple it looks. And I don't remember the original car being that purple. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to add some red to it. And then the hardener, I usually for the amount of paint I had there, I'll probably do a dozen drops. And that seems to be sufficient. I'm going to probably bake the paint when I'm done too, so uh, that'll help. But then uh, I give it a good stir and get it into the booth. And we'll put a little tack coat on it here to, uh, you know, get that surface ready for some heavier paint. Uh, I liked the color. I think I got uh, in the ballpark of where it started out to be, which was my desire. Don't forget those doors. Get a little bit heavier coat going here. Um, I think I wound up actually putting uh, three total coats on it. And then I finished off with uh, Redline Shop Clear, which is a wonderful clear. Gives it a really hard finish. I really like this color. I think it turned out really well. And I do like doing these projects. Of course, you know, the thing of it is, is if you're going to do this, you have to have, you know, a casting that's a good candidate for it. Some castings, you get the paint off them and they're just, you know, too beat up to smooth out. Uh, we went to put her together here. Had to get that wonderful matchbox door spring back in there. Put the doors in, hopefully, without scratching any of the paint. Drop that window glass in there. The interior, both of which had just been cleaned in soapy water. I didn't go overboard. They were still in pretty good shape. And I touched up the uh, bumpers on the chassis there with just, I just used a Sharpie, a black Sharpie. And this is where I wound up. There you go. The Matchbox number 67D, Dotson. 260Z super fast. I didn't do a doggone thing to those super fast wheels. They just look really good. Uh, there's going to be an episode of The Bench afterwards where I'm going to talk about my eBay store, which is going to be open today and include this particular car. So stick around and I'll get you an address. So if you're interested in buying a casting, you'll know where to go. 
This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around for this edition of The Bench. First, let me talk about a couple of things that I'm working on right now. Uh, mainly this uh, Land Rover 190 for that Roverland challenge that I made to Dan O. How the hunk are you over at Roverland? Uh, I'm going to make this into a vehicle I saw in a movie and Dan uh, has to figure out what movie it was from. And if he does, I'm going to send it to him. And then, of course, I'm still working on this Mercedes. You know, and it's weird because this has that kind of a pebbly finish, real similar uh, to what that uh, Lamborghini that I just did had. And I, I think they intended it that way to give it, I don't know, some kind of texture or something because uh, some parts of it are very smooth and then around the edges it has that real, real rough surface. So we'll see what happens with that. And then I had uh, something new that I wanted to start. You know, I I really appreciate the the community that has developed around you know all the people that do diecast customs and restorations, and it's gratifying to see everybody has their own style. And you know, I don't do a lot of builds. Uh, usually, I'll do the charity stuff if if I have time for it, and uh, I do the three blind mice, and I love doing that. But I thought I might try uh, having a, a mystery build with another builder every so often, maybe every month or every six weeks or something, um, where I'm going to provide them with a casting and invite them to build with me. And we'll we, we aren't going to say anything about it uh, until the release date. And then we'll, uh, we'll have our mystery build uh, published date and... And then on that uh, published date, we will reveal ourselves to the community and uh, hopefully they'll like what we did. I suppose uh, anything is possible. A number of people have expressed interest in owning one of my castings, and I've been talking for a time about putting some of them on eBay. I have an eBay store called We Little Cars, all one word, and I will begin posting auctions of my castings today. Uh, if I did everything right, they'll all go live when this video does. I've never monetized or sought Patreon support for my channel, and I'm not really doing the auctions for the money. In some of my auctions, the proceeds will go to Toys for Tots, and some will help me offset the cost of my hobby. Truth be told, the idea of having my little cars out there floating around kind of flattering. To that end, I plan to keep track of where my wee little cars go. An electronic pushpin map, uh, so to speak. You'll notice the one I have here already has some darkened areas because I've already sent some wee little cars to other places. You know, a great poet once said he did it for the love, but he wasn't above the money. So I guess that's kind of where I'm at on this. That said, all of my starting bids will be reflective of the value involved, decals, parts, casting costs, etc. What you're going to be bidding on is what you think my work is valued at. I'm not looking to begin doing custom work for hire, so please don't contact me with such requests. I probably won't even answer. I'm putting six castings up today, three restorations and three customs. The first is the Matchbox 11B ERF petrol tanker. The second is the Matchbox number 20C Chevrolet Impala taxi cab. The third, the 37B Carrier Coca-Cola lorry. I'll follow that up with the Matchbox Z car I did in this video. Uh, my second custom will be the Nova panel that I did for the last three blind mice build. And finally, the Acura HSC concept car. Each of the castings will have my mark somewhere on the bottom. So, bid wisely. That said, I really don't have anything else for you today. Please feel free to comment below. Be respectful. Thumb up, thumb down. Don't matter to me. I don't earn anything from this to speak of. So, that's it. This is Time Writer. Hope to see you at the next build.